All right, guys, this is going to be an update week seven going into week eight. The first thing I want to say is I posted a video probably today. I'll probably post this tonight. And once again, I've been stressing proper business tactics. Now, when I say the peanut gallery, this is the number of people who feel that they're smarter than me, but have no receipts, not one receipt, not half a receipt, have no receipts, no measure of success because they're listening to people here on the internet and they feel that they can cheat the system. I have one clown, once again, peanut gallery. There are some members of the comment section who are members of the peanut gallery and the peanut gallery are people who feel that they're smarter than me, but have no money, have no success, have no business. They're narcissists. They're raving narcissists because they feel, because they, they think they're smart, even though there's no evidence of how smart they are. So that's what I mean when I refer to the peanut gallery. All right, so let's get into this. Update on the Porsche on June 15th. I filed the police report on the renter and things got really interesting. Many of you in the comments have long suspected that there was some fuckery going on. Good Lord. I don't know why people want to play with me. Yeah, I, I'm faster than you, like way faster. Um, Many of you in the comment section have long suspected that the renter had something to do with it. And you know what? The way that it's shaping up, um, it's looking that way. Uh, I filed a police report on the renter and the detective who's working the case, he went ahead and looked in his databases to see if there was a stolen 2010 Porsche Cyan. He told me that he could not find any record of a Porsche Cyan SUV being stolen. So the story is starting to fall apart. And the detective reached out to the renter and the renter didn't want to talk to the detective. So his story has already fallen apart. So let's go with scenario number one, that he indeed let some chick drive it and she set him up and she gave it to one of her homeboys or scenario number two put in the comments which one you believe that he liked the car so much that he just decided to keep it he made up a story with little regard to the future and what i mean by that is i'm a very thorough person i will file papers you know it took me a minute because next time this happens I'm just going to send the demand letter because essentially, let me tell you what I had to do to activate theft by conversion. I had to send a demand letter saying, bring my property back, wait five days, and on the 24 hours of the fifth day, the vehicle was entered into the police database as a stolen vehicle. Now, I have no clarification on this because I asked the detective since now, this is a stolen vehicle case. It's an active stolen vehicle case. Since I filed the police report on him, if he's driving another car, will he be arrested? I don't know if that's the case or not yet. I have no clue if that's going to be the situation, but we will get some clarification on that. So first thing is, now that I actually filed the police report, I've started the claims process and I have some questions for the claims adjuster, which she has not answered. When does the 30 days start? Because she said it'll probably be a month before I get a check. Does that start today? Or does that start when the car went missing? When does that 30 day clock start ticking? I don't know yet, but I do know that at the latest, I should be getting the check June 24th. I filed a claim yesterday because I got the police report, the car stolen. So July, excuse me, July 24th, I should be getting a check. So that's where we are with that. 
I, I'll have more updates with that. So let's talk about what has happened in week seven. Um, some of you guys guessed correctly about the Acura. It is indeed the starter. But there's an issue with the hood. So they have to fix the hood to fix the starter because they don't know if they shut the hood if it'll open up again. So the starter is $450. So it's going to be like $825 to fix the starter and to fix the hood. And also, the Camry with the bumper hanging off. Um, I'm probably not getting that car back this week. Because, essentially, Toyota sent them the wrong bumper. Well, Toyota sent them the right bumper per the packaging, but the bumper in the packaging was the wrong bumper. So, it may be next week before I get that back. Because I asked her, I was like, when do you think they're going to send you the right bumper? Then, the Mini. Not buying any more Minis. The Mini. Minis are hard to work on. So, they, they tried to fix it. It wouldn't. They were trying to... Because they had to replace the fuel pump and some other stuff. And the, it, when they put the housing cover back on, it didn't want to properly seal... So we had to order a new housing cover. Uh, they're not going to hit me over the head with that. So I should be getting the mini back tomorrow. Also, I have a BMW, which I think is tuned. Now, what is tuning? For those of you who are familiar with tuning. Tuning is when you manipulate the chip in the car and make it go faster because I have a 335 which is kind of zippy but this 330i it's got the sports package it's got the exhaust it begs I mean the sucker's fast it is really really fast so I rented this car to a young lady yesterday 8 30 at night I get this message I need you to come get the car. It has flat tires, two flat tires. It's like, what? What happened? And because she's young, she was driving this super fast car and she ran over a pothole with low profile tires. So you know what happened. The tires went flat, $650 for a set of four. Now they're going, Glendon, you could just get two tires. Well, see, that's not how you fix stuff. Because if I got two tires, I would have mismatched tires on both sides of the vehicle. And that could affect how it drives because the vehicle comes with staggered tires. Staggered. And essentially, I had to call around because my first quote was like $1,500. So I got them, they're putting some Kumos on at Pet Boys for $650. 1500 or 650 you know what I did so also I haven't heard back from her but I went ahead and explained to her that you now owe me between the tires and the tow $820 and as I've gone through this I am beginning to see why people's cars deteriorate you need to have some financial reserves to properly take care of your car. And most folks, knowing what I know about the average finances of America, they don't have money. So what they will do is trade the car in for a newer one with all the problems and issues. So I hit this girl up and I said, I'm willing to take a hundred bucks a week until we get this played off because they'll take her two months at a hundred bucks a week to pay me off because one of the things I'm going to do is start giving these guys a little conversation. You know, I, I've dealt with the public before. I know I have to be friendly. I can't be like, you break it, you bought it. I want to be that way, but that's hostile. That's just not going to work from a business perspective. So I'm going to start, I'm probably going to print up some directions or you know, like, all right, hey, thank you for renting this car from Mac Daddy Autos. We appreciate your business. Just some things you should know. 
if you lose the key, you're gonna have to pay for that. And keys are really expensive, P. If you run over some and you make a tire go flat, you will have to pay for that because insurance only covers extreme collisions. So if you get in an accident, someone T-bones you or something like that, yes, the insurance will cover that. If you're driving and the car just stops working, yes, I will fix that. But if you do something like lose a key, um, make the tires go flat or anything like that, that's on you, player. That's on you. And I'm gonna charge you for it because that's something you've done. And you know, I'm gonna have to start doing this because I'm probably not gonna rent this BMW out to a young person again. And I'm probably gonna put that in the listing. It's like, if you're really young, this is not the car for you, it's too fast. And I'm probably gonna charge 50 bucks a day for it now that I know that this car is tuned. Uh, I'm gonna put in there, this is a soupy little car, it's tuned. Um, I'm gonna change some things around, but I'm not getting the Camry back, I don't think, this week. And I'm not getting the um, Acura TL back this week. And I had a week long rental. And this is where it really, really hurts when you have someone who wants a car and your car is down. And I gotta think of a contingency plan for that because um, I've been managing the fleet quite well this week, if I say so myself. Uh, I, Cause I've learned some stuff, I've learned some stuff. One of the things I learned is once your car rents once, it rents out the second time much easier. So I got someone who brought back the BMW because he was having problems with it. I had the BMW taken to the shop. They found nothing wrong with it. So I brought it back, rented it out. But now that he's rented that Range Rover, and I, I told him, you know, because essentially I was expecting the Mini back today. The Mini is probably going to be back tomorrow. So at the moment, I have, except for the Acura, the, the Camry, and the BMW, everything else is rented. So what I flipped this girl into, because I didn't have the conversation with her, but I flipped her into a Camry. And, you know, like I said, I haven't heard from her because... Um, until I hear from her, because since she owes me money, I may go ahead and activate the rental. You know, whether she picks it up or not, and at least get that money out of her. Because if she goes radio silent, like, I don't hear nothing, I don't see nothing, I'm not gonna communicate, I'm gonna go ghost, then, you know, that's gonna tell me a lot about her and, you know, how this whole thing goes down. Also, Another thing that happened, Camry, which I have back, the Camry that I flipped her into. Um, essentially, the Camry was in an accident, a rear accident, which messed up the trunk. And instead of fixing it correctly, what they did is some kind of, I don't know what the hell they did, but instead of fixing it, they manipulated, they played around with it, and, um, I essentially had to replace the lock, the locking mechanism, and I had to replace the um, the part that it clips in. That was like 500 bucks. And also, we need to have a conversation. If you're gonna get in the car rental business and you don't have a credit card with nothing on it for these incidentals, because let's see, $3,400 for the Mini, 820 for the BMW, 850 for the Acura TL, 500 bucks for the Camry to get the lock fixed. And I cannot wait until I have a month where I don't have these repairs or these incidents because it's going to come. Because at some point, I'm going to fix everything that needs to be fixed or I'm going to get rid of that car. And, you know, that's what I'm like. I said, I've learned so much this week. Because next time someone pulls the, oh, the car got stolen at, that day I am sending them a certified letter demanding my property back. Because that actually starts the clock. And, you know, essentially I am pissed off 
because I got a $20,000 vehicle that is not making me any money, that if I had this vehicle, it would be making me money. And, you know, I'm learning. Seven weeks in, I have learned a lot. Number one, you need to have two keys. Um, fortunately, this girl showed up because I thought it was gonna be a disaster because the tow truck driver, because essentially I'm learning to trust people. I had a tow truck driver pick up the Acura. I left the key under the seat. He took it to some people I've never met. And they called me and told me what was wrong with it. Like I said, a lot of you were 100% spot on when you said it's probably the starter because that's what it was. And I'm, I, I'm building resources because this one tow truck driver, I'm saving this information because at some point I'm probably gonna need a tow truck driver in the future. And towing is all over the place. There's one place I called yesterday. It was like 210 to tow that car. This guy charged me 150. So I'm building, I got a key guy. I got a mechanic for the BMWs and stuff. Um, I feel that I now have a mechanic for the Acras because essentially you got to have these resources. You got to have go-to people for these things. But let's go 3,400, 8, 8. So that's 5,400. That's $6,000. That, you know, it's irritating because if those cars were in service, they would be out bringing dollars back versus costing dollars. And, you know, I, I'm really waiting to get these titles because I got one car that I'm gonna probably call in because the girl, she lost her job, she's perpetually late, and it's it's becoming annoying. So I'm, I'm gonna call in that, probably get that back this weekend and see what happens. Um, the guy who has the Range Rover, he rented it for another day, so I think he's gonna keep it for another month. Um, so we will see how that goes. And in July, I want to see how much I make per day because when, you know, I had some days where I made like almost 1700 bucks, but I rented out a lot of cars and that was the initial rent. I want to see what the daily rent is going to average out to because I feel, I don't my can't my calculator's here. If it averages out to 500 a day consistently, that's 15,000 a month. If it averages out to like a thousand, but see the issue is getting the whole fleet rented. Because right now the Camry is down because of the bumper. The Mini is down because of fuel injection pump. The BMW will be back in service and essentially she's supposed to be coming to pick up this Camry. And I, I wanna see if she's gonna duck me because, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's interesting because um, the BMW will probably be rented out tomorrow and I need to change that listing and update it and say that this is a fast car and change the pricing on that BMW and put it up for 50 bucks a day because it's a fast little car. And then, um, yeah, so let's talk business. Okay, once again, I mentioned, you know, my definition of the peanut gallery. And, you know, like I said, the majority of the comments are positive, they're uplifting. A lot of guys appreciate what I'm doing, so I appreciate you guys, thank you. And I got some moist, wimpy, unaccomplished men because I can show you charts. I can go up to heaven and knock on heaven's door and bring Jesus down and Jesus can say, that's the way you run a business. You'd be like, no, 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 no. I want to finance. And I'm going to tell you why you want to finance. I'm going to tell you exactly why you want to finance. You don't feel in your heart of hearts, you have the talent, the ability to stack up some money and do what I did. Now, this is what's funny about that statement. 
I was once homeless. Are you homeless? I don't think so. So I started below where you currently are. And if you would position yourself and if you would qualify yourself, you could get here. You're not gonna get here in three weeks like many of these fake ass YouTubers are telling you. You're not gonna get here in a few months. It took me years to get here, years. And that's what it's gonna take you to get here. You're not gonna start some business that's gonna blow up and you're gonna quit your job and you'll be drinking tropical drinks with Big Booty Betty at 8 p.m. while you're watching ESPN. Let the fantasies of the, and delusion go. Let the fantasy go, man. Let it go. Because the reality is um, one of the things that you have to understand and acknowledge is there's a lot of money in the world. And this is how I wake up every day. I wake up every day with this idea like who has my money in their pocket? There is like here in Atlanta, we are wide open. Every day, because I'm out more, I'm literally running into traffic jams at 10 a.m., 12 p.m., 2 p.m., 4 p.m., and 7 p.m. People out here making moves. People out here doing business. People are conducting themselves. There is a lot of money out here to be gotten, but you got to put yourself in a position to get the money. You need to put yourself in the position to get the money. And if you don't put yourself in the position to get the money, you're not going to get the money. You're just not going to get the money. And one of the things, as I talked about risk and reward, you know, where I'm holding the gun and the cash, right now I'm taking risk, you know? And I know at some point, because I've been through this before, um, when I got in the storage auction business, everything you could think of went wrong. People were playing with me. Now, in that business, I went through about 30 grand before I started to make money. Complete loss of 30 grand. But as I learned and I got in the business, I recoup that $30,000 that was lost. In this business, I've not lost any money. And a lot of you are like, He's talking about these repairs. And he's talking about what he's making. It's horrible. I've been doing this seven weeks. Seven weeks. This is the beginning. Seven weeks. And some of you peanut gallery clowns are like, well, you know, you, uh, I'm old-fashioned. Uh, I, I believe in making a profit the, the first month. Okay, Microsoft, Amazon, uh, Home Depot, none of these companies made a profit their first five years. Their first five years. And many of you are under this, seduced by this cloud of fake YouTube advice that you can start a business in a matter of weeks and make money. And you got to let that go. And that's what I'm fighting against because there are so many channels like you could do this, you can make X amount of money and they never get into the details. What do you have to do? Who's your customer? How do you market? How do you collect money? They never get into those important pesky details. Never. There's a girl that once I get a time, I'm gonna do a savage finance review on her because she is young and she's doing what young people do. I mean, she's like 18, 19 years old. And she literally put up a video talking about, I started doing affiliate marketing last month. I made 4,000. It's easy and it's simple. And the part she left out is she has a TikTok channel. She has a YouTube channel. And she has, she has assets that generate traffic. If you go ahead and do exactly what she said to do, you would not have the same results that she has because you don't have the same digital assets that she has. And she completely left that part out consciously. How do I know? She has a drop shipping store. 
she knows to make money with drop shipping, you gotta have traffic. So she knows this. She knows this, and she's just kind of leaving out that important detail to get views. To get views. And I'm just sitting there like I'm I'm patently disgusted with this because one of the things is there is so much of this fake YouTube advice. Um Graham Stephan, he he's another one who puts out a lot of stuff that's not applicable. You can't apply their advice, but because it sounds good and they make it sound so simple, so easy. Then when you see me starting a business seven weeks ago, going through the trials and tribulations, you're like, good Lord, I, I, I don't want to do that. And essentially, what I am going through, if you're going to have a successful business, this is what you're going through. And I keep bringing up Erica. Erica got in trucking. And Erica made the decision that she was going to leave trucking because she did not like the headache which I can respect and appreciate because, you know, like, I never even looked at trucking because, you know, years and years ago, when I had my warehouse, there was a guy who had a trucking company and he was always complaining about drivers. And this was years ago. He was always complaining about drivers. I think he had five trucks and his wife, she was young, she was pretty, and she could drive a truck. I remember the first time I saw her in the truck because I saw her and I was like, who is that child driving that truck? Because she's like five foot nothing. And then she hopped out the truck with a little hot shorts on and her little high tops. And I was like, good Lord, she's cute as all get out. And I found out, then I saw the guy who owned the trucking company. So yeah, that's my wife dude at the time was maybe 50 and that girl I would say had to be 25 to 28 because she was young right and tight and I was like salute you sir because he got it because he had that trucking company he got it because he could provide a life for her but he was always complaining about the drivers always complaining saying you know and this is when I feel that people had more employee employer loyalty nothing like today nothing like today so essentially we're going to have a day in the future where everything i have is going to be rented out and based upon my calculations if i have everything rented and i have everything rented for 30 days that's 24 25 000 with my current fleet and with this on turo we're running an experiment with this car on Turo, so we will see how this goes. Um, we will see. So, yeah. So I'm about to check and see if this girl <laughs> responded or she going to duck me because I got to think about it. How would I feel if I hit a pothole in a car, I damaged some tires, and I got an email saying that I owe someone $820 and I'm out here struggling. I would not be happy. But if it was me, I would I would pay it. And I'm going to see what she's going to do because essentially one of the things I've learned is with these losses, the thing that saves me is keeping stuff rented because the car, the BMW is at the shop and they're putting tires on it. And I believe that bad boy will go out again tomorrow. And that's the thing that keeps me in the frame. And essentially the Mini, I got someone who wants the Mini, the Mini ain't back. So I have three cars that are down. And one of the things that I'm beginning to see is when the car is down, it has to be repaired. You know, cause my guys over here spoil me. The guys who fix my European cars, typically if I get it there in the morning, they'll have it fixed that afternoon. And essentially, uh, this new place I'm trying out, they're not getting the starter until Monday. Monday. And then the thing with the Camry, they're waiting on Toyota to send them the right part. Who knows when that's going to happen? So essentially, I am four cars down, including the stolen Porsche. 
which is looking like it wasn't stolen. As many of you in the comments dropped this, like, I don't, I, I, I believe he's took that car. He did something with it. And once again, the police report, like I asked him, I was like, he cannot find evidence of a reported black Porsche stolen. Black Porsche Cyan. He, it should have showed up in his database if this car was stolen. And the guy, he, he reached out to the guy and the guy didn't want to talk to him. And I understand that people do stupid things. I understand that people do dumb things. And, you know, people will do something like this. Like, I'm just going to take this guy's car. And I'm not even going to think of the future. Like, it never occurred to this dude that I was going to call the police. I don't know what he was thinking because... I called the police because I essentially I needed that report to get the insurance claim. I needed that report. And without that report, I could not file a, uh, an insurance claim. They're like, well, did you call the police? No. Well, you're going to have to call the police first. I know this. I live in the world of reality. So I don't understand. And one of my renters said he did something with that car. He did something with that car. And, you know, based upon the information that I'm going to get later on the day, he might be getting arrested. He might be getting arrested. I don't know if he gets caught like in a traffic stop and they run his license. It's like, oh, there's a warrant for your arrest for stolen car. I would love it if he gets stopped, stopped at a traffic stop two years in the future. He's like, ha ha, I got away with this. He's just driving. He gets pulled over. Step out the car, sir. Click, click. And he go to jail. Because um, essentially he's playing with my money. Playing games. And, you know, it's, um, it's crazy what is happening right now. Because, um, like I said, um, I left my house at 830 this morning. It is now... 415 and the BMW will be back today. And another thing, uh, I gotta see if this girl's gonna respond because if she's not gonna respond, I'm just gonna be like, because this is where I'm gonna have to start with the messaging that hey, let me tell you, thank you for renting this car from Mac Daddy and all those, but let me tell you some stuff that insurance doesn't cover. If you are going down the road and the car just cuts off on you, I will fix that. But if you lose the keys or you run over something and the car has to be towed, you're going to have to pay for the towing. You're going to have to pay for the car, fist, all this other stuff. And also, this is a financially vulnerable population. So it's going to be interesting how this goes because essentially anytime they do something to a car, the damage that they do always extremely out exceeds what I would get in rent from him. Like this guy who brought back the Camry with the bumper hanging off, he didn't even pay his rent. He's late. He cannot rent another car on hire car. He said he was going to pay me. So he only owed me like $250, but the damage on the Camry, I got to pay $500 because there's a $500 deductible. And also, when I move to the 85% plan on most of them, I want to have a $3,000 deductible. $3,000 deductible. So I got to start communicating with these guys. It's like, hey, drive this as if you owned it. Be very careful with it because if you tear it up, I'm going to get it fixed and I'm going to hit you over the head with whatever it costs me to get it fixed. And you don't want that. So drive like you got some sense. Don't be wrecking cars. Don't be running over stuff. And like I said, when I looked at this girl's license the other day, I was like, man, you're young. And I, I, my mind was just like, I don't know if this is a good idea. Because the BMW, I am almost 100% positive that it's been tuned. Because it's like way faster than the other one. And it's got this super slick suspension that takes curves like a dream. And even the tow truck driver said, that's a 2006. It looks really good. It's 2006. 
that you know the air blows cold um it, it, it runs tight it runs nicely and um yeah so that's all i got for you guys be looking on the lookout for corporate papers i'm gonna start that in july don't buy the um art of holding i'm going to do away with that and if you're in the art of holding you will get the new training i'm just going to make it unaccessible for new people so that's all i got for you guys i will see you in the next one